Hello, this is Political Forum for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. Uh, we welcome today as our special guest, Alderman Willie B. Cochran from Chicago's 20th Ward. Uh, I'm Rod Joy, a board member here at CAN TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live interactive call-in program that's designed to connect you directly with your elected official. Uh, during the next 25 minutes or so, uh, we hope you'll have an opportunity to learn more about uh, Alderman Cochran uh, and his views on some of the most pressing challenges and opportunities facing our city. Above all, Political Forum is about fostering a strong culture of civic engagement in the city. Uh, your voice is a big component of the program. Uh, we invite your calls and questions for Alderman Cochran. Uh, please join us. We'll try to get to as many calls as possible. Uh, we're at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, welcome back to Political Forum, Alderman. Well, thank you for having me. It's a great time to be here at Political Forum. There are so many things happening in the 20th Ward and across the city, and it gives us an opportunity to speak out to the community and have them to call in and speak out to me. Uh, so I thank you for giving me this opportunity to come to the show. Great. Now, you're no stranger to CAN TV and Political Forum, but for our viewers who may be meeting you for the first time tonight, uh, what can you tell people about the 20th Ward? 20th Ward is made up of six communities, Woodlawn, Washington Park, Inglewood, New City, Park Manor, and back of the yards. I go from 45th on the north, Sealy on the west. Uh, on the east side is Stony Island, down to 69th and the Dan Ryan, and Garfield Boulevard. So I cover a great deal of territory from one end of my ward to the other. And it's a very diverse ward. I love the diversity, uh, and, it, but it's, and each one of the communities have similar but different needs. And we try to meet those needs and address them the best that we possibly can. Great. So hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about some of those needs and, and some of those opportunities. Um, one issue that's been in the news and will likely uh, be in the news a lot more over the, the, the weeks and months to come is the minimum wage. And there are a lot of people who believe that raising the minimum wage will make us all richer. Uh, and that if you set aside uh, social justice or equity issues, that raising the minimum wage is good for business. Um, you've been vocal on this issue. W what are your thoughts about the minimum wage? Well, the minimum wage is not the most important thing as far as that's concerned. The most important thing is how we use our money and how smart we are in applying the money that we get. I've seen situations where people make $10,000 a year and other people make $70,000 a year. And the one that has $10,000 a year is able to do save more than that of the person who just blows their money. But um, that aside, I believe very strongly that wages should be raised. Yes, I do. I am very supportive of that, and I think people who are working in these restaurants and McDonald's and wherever they're working at need to be above the seven eight dollar price that they are getting paid today and speaking of wages and jobs I know uh, one issue that's front and center for you is the one summer Chicago program yes the one summer Chicago program is a program that we have uh, have been able to put about 20,000 jobs in place uh, not only with One Summer Chicago, the Chicago Park District has employment opportunities over the summer. Uh, the state of Illinois provides resources over the summer. So we have an opportunity to put maybe 30, 35,000 youth, 14 to 24, to work six hours a day, five days a week. Great. And uh, w what advice would you give people watching today who want to learn more about uh, that particular program? Well, um, what I'd like for them to do to go is go to one summer Chicago on uh, org and make application over the internet for those that don't have internet to call 744-4000-312-744-4000 uh, the city operator will contact you will get the city operator and they will be able to direct you to the next steps uh, we want to hire as many that, as we can we want to fulfill all of those slots. But more people in the history of this application process has made applications than has been available jobs. 
And so we want to be able to uh, get as many and add to as many as we possibly can. And the beautiful thing about this is employers have an opportunity to get labor that is paid for by the government bodies. And so it, you just don't have to work on uh, any alderman's office. You don't have to work on uh, in picking up paper and sweeping and cleaning our neighborhoods, which is very important. If you can find an employer who can give you a, time, a job space, then you can utilize that resource that we provide and we pay for you working at that clothing store, at that restaurant, at that bike company or bike factory or repair shop, whatever the case might be. We want to be able to get you some work and make it a good growing experience. You're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we invite you to flex your activism muscles by uh, calling in with your questions and comments for Alderman Cochran of the 20th Ward. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Uh, yes. Good evening, Alderman. Good evening. Uh, two quick questions. In the year 2015 now, can you explain what's going to happen about these plastic bags? I mean, you could ride all through the city. You see them in the trees. <laughs> They're just everywhere, you know. And number two, what did they do? What is that building over there on Stone Island where Doctor's Hospital used to be? Can you tell me what they put there? Uh, thank you for taking the call. Let me get out there so I can your response. So thank you. Okay. Where the Doctor's Hospital used to be now is a new high school for the University of Chicago Lab School. On um, and. For the plastic bags, we voted on that today in the council, and it passed uh, 36 to 10 uh, with a couple of abstentions to limit stores that offer plastic bags to those stores that are 10,000 square feet and above. Uh, there was a lot of push and shove on this, and uh, concessions were made, uh, time were extended for smaller stores in the beginning but in the end we came to a compromise why the compromise was that if you take a smaller store and you have them to have to provide paper which is more expensive than plastic then it's going to increase their cost that cost is going to be passed on to the consumer and when you talk about the neighborhood stores uh, which is very important uh, in our neighborhoods then that is not able we are not able to absorb the cost of not having plastic bags but one of the more important things I want to talk about in this plastic bag issue it's not just plastic bag that's littering it's us who are littering we're dropping the plastic bags and this is an education you know, issue we have to teach our neighborhood residents to drop garbage in the garbage can drop garbage in the garbage can and not just drop it on the ground. That's number one. Number two, the plastic bags, everything, so many things in our society today has plastic. A, a car fender is made out of plastic. We have plastic that is, wraps our ground beef in the stores. We have plastic that we go into the grocery stores and get vegetables and put them in and fruit and we put them in and we walk to the counter and now it's we cannot put the plastic bags and the plastic containers that we have in a bag to carry out of the store and what I say in that example means that this is a bigger issue than just a plastic single-use bag we can reuse that bag it's education we can put it in the garbage it's education we can find ways to recycle that product it's about the industry doing what the industry should do to ensure that we, they are compostable. And compostable mean that they dissolve over a period of time and go back into the earth. That's what we're talking about. A issue that we need to have addressed holistically across the board rather than just singling out a single use plastic bag which make, has a very, very small amount of impact in our community. Addressing this environment is extremely important. Anything that we can do to improve our environment, we need to be doing. But let's do it in a holistic manner. 
And to just to, to recap uh, what happened today in the city council. So the plastic bag ban went into effect. And for larger stores, uh, that, that, that ban will go into effect in August of 2015. Mm -hmm. And then there's an additional uh, year where that ban will go into effect for smaller neighborhood stores. Is that right? Well, the smaller neighborhood stores were taken off the table. Okay. Great. Uh, this is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Our special guest today is Alderman Willie Cochran from the 20th Ward. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening. Good evening. It seems like uh, the temperatures are heating up, and at the same time, so is the street violence in the city, especially when it comes to our youth. Now, I know that you have a background in law enforcement, so are, are you concerned with the way things are going so far this year in terms of uh, street violence? I am concerned about street violence. Yes, I am. Safety in our communities is the highest priority uh, for all of us because it just does not stay in one community. It moves around and everybody is exposed to it. Street violence, and I, I just don't want to say street violence because when you look at the news stories today, we're looking at stories of families uh, being um, killed and then somebody commits suicide. We're looking at shootings that are taking place in schools on um, and it's in all socioeconomic levels of our society street violence most certainly is a dangerous thing and what do we have to do to address that when we look at all of the body of evidence that's associated with street violence we see a number of different factors that are impacting it those factors parenting housing education socialization, mental health. And one of the biggest things that we find is that the children who 70% of the youth that are in our juvenile justice systems are in need of mental treatment, 70% of them. And so this goes back further than juvenile crime. It goes back to growing up in pediat pediatrics. It, grows, it goes back to the womb. It goes back to mental health, being removing all of those things that a child or family sees as they grow up, yellow tape, violence, death, and making it abnormal rather than in making it an abnormal way of life. If we don't relieve our children of the pressures and the stresses that go along with living in an urban society, then they are going to carry that on. I'm a big advocate of youth mental health, pediatric mental health, and that is something that is extremely important. I'm a big advocate of mental health, period. That would help us a great deal. Police are there, and we want to depend on the police to do their jobs, but we also know that we spent $100 million last year on policing. Where else could we have spent those kind of resources to have a longer-term impact on our community? We need to have the police there. We need to have the specialized units there. We need to lock up the bad guy. We need to address pediatric mental health. We need to address families and the supportive systems, employment opportunities, and education, education, education. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Our guest tonight is Alderman Willie B. Cochran from Chicago's 20th Ward. Uh, we invite your questions and your comments for Alderman Cochran. Uh, please join us at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you for taking my phone call. Uh, I have a question. Um, is there any talk about tra uh, trauma center being set up in the south side? Well, there's always talk about that. Uh, but there we... I am an advocate of a trauma center set up on the south side, um, and many other advocacy groups are um, working on that, on uh, trying to get it done. I think we have to take some innovative approaches to creating a trauma center. Uh, we know that there's a major hospital that once had a trauma center, but withdrew that. On uh, the trauma center issue, what we find is that is not state regulated. On. I think one of the things that our government needs to do at the state level is to find a way that we can come up with some solutions to put a trauma center provision 
in place that requires trauma centers a certain number of miles away from one another. Your life, if you are on the southeast side of Chicago, no matter what your race, sex, or economic status is, if you get into an accident, a traffic accident on one side of the town, your life is less valuable than it is on another side of town. Why? Because it takes so long to get you to a trauma center. And that should not be. That should be a civil right, just like any other right that we have, to be able to have access in the United States of America, in the city of Chicago. And so uh, you can hear the passion in my voice about this. Trauma centers have to be at the forefront of our conversation. I am working with a number of fund, uh, leaders in the, the hospital industry. I believe that if one person or one institution says that it costs too much, it should be shared costs. So everybody should be pitching in, 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 including government. And if it is a time element associated with it, then one hospital should carry it for five years and then another hospital should carry it for five years and funding should be shifted. Therefore, that way, we will be able to address quickly the issue of a trauma center. But we have to bring people to the table who are earnest in their reproaches and not just uh, give lip service and resistance. Keep so we need you and many of you like you to keep the heat up, to call your state legislators, to call your mayor, to call your alderman, to take the leaders in your community and say, we need to have this done. So keep the heat up and keep the calls coming. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Uh, our guest tonight is Alderman Cochran from Chicago's 20th Ward. Uh, we invite your, your questions for the Alderman at 312-738-1060. I think we have uh, another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? I'm here. Your, your Mr. Que Cochran. Yes. I'd like to know why you refuse to sponsor a cleanup effort in Washington Park when I talked with you in June of 2012 at your Wednesday meeting. I'd also like to know why you refused to back a cityscape for Michigan Avenue when I requested that from you in June of 2011. So it seems like some very specific inquiries uh, r related to the, the ward. Any feedback there? Well, every year we have cleanups. In fact, Saturday we were at, we had a citywide cleanup. We had people in Washington Park, 58th and Michigan Avenue, 50. Uh, where else was it at? Uh, uh, the Veteran Center cleanup on that day. Communities and community groups and individuals on blocks are the ones that are charged with creating cleanups, and we support the city of Chicago. When I say we, we support cleanups the best that we can with shovels, brooms, plastic bags, garbage trucks to come by and pick it up afterwards. Uh, we call out the swap team uh, to clean up vacant lots. We support, we don't only look back at 2012. 2012 is two years ago. If we didn't sponsor cleanups, every inch of the community would be inundated with filth. And so I think it's a little disingenuous to say we don't address cleaning issues in Washington Park. Absolutely not. 2011 you know, on Michigan Avenue, I don't even remember that. Alderman Willie B. Cochran is here tonight. This is Political Forum. We have about five minutes left. We're going to try to get to as many calls as possible. We have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi, I had a quick question about whether you think the uh, Obama Presidential Library could come to the ward. And what could the impact be on property values there? Are you concerned about, you know, kind of making it more expensive for people who live in the neighborhood if it does come there? Cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you worried about property values uh, going up? If, it, if you have property in, 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 in the 20th Ward and it is impacted by the Obama Library coming in, bravo for you. You're, that means that the, one of the biggest tools, our main tool for capital growth in our families has grown. And that means the capital in your family, the value of your family's asset goes up. Is there, are there going to be some additional uh, people worry about the taxes associated with it? Let's see how that impacts it. But I would love to have the Obama Library come because that means that 
uh, additional resources will come to our community. Um, better infrastructure will be able to put more homes up, sir. Uh, that means that the cost per household would go down in terms of real estate because we'll have more real estate in the communities. And so there's a value to doing that. We'll have more retail in the community. We'll have more on uh, financing in the community. I think it is a great opportunity that I embrace and I hope in fact you see the value of it too. Don't be afraid of your property value going up. I, uh, that's um, one of the things that most people want to see happen. Do you want to have your taxes go up? Every tax, tell me when taxes have not gone up. We always have a tax increase. Uh, will it go up more? I'm not going to speculate how much more, but I would, I would love to see that take place. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I only have one question, and that question is, can you explain to me how the uh, a bill got passed, I believe it was today or yesterday or recently, for the DePaul Super Sports Center where $600 million of TIF money uh, is going to be used to build that super center, and no constituent input was asked, wasn't put on the ballot, or anything brought to the people. Actually, it was not six hundred million in TIF money that went into it. I think it was fifty million. It's a six hundred million dollar project. On um, five hundred and fifty is uh, privately done and through bonding, where it would be paid back by the uh, metropolitan. Peer authority, on um, the fifty million will not go toward the DePaul Center itself. It that was not that was taken off the table. On um, the fifty billion that is going to be contributed, will go to the re development of retail, hotel, job creation, and infrastructure improvement. That was something that we did not agree with. Uh, we resisted it, and when I say we, the aldermen uh, and uh, leadership and community, we listened to that voice, and uh, we had that change. Yeah. So um, it was not 600 million of TIF dollars; it was 50 million, and that 50 million went to the causes that TIF dollars are intended to go to: job creation, economic development. Uh, this is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Our guest tonight is Alderman Willie Cochran from Chicago's 20th Ward. Uh, we fielded some terrific uh, questions this evening. Uh, we just have a few moments left, and uh, why don't we use our remaining time to talk about some good news stories and, 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 and some forward-leaning progressive stories. And I know you're involved with creating opportunities for young people uh, in the ward, and I think you're, you uh, are playing a role uh, around uh, a baseball program. Do you want to say just a few words about uh, some ward updates and uh, any summer programs? Well, we have a, a summer program for kids that is in the 7th uh, Englewood community where 5th through 8th graders will be able to um, become part of the baseball league, boys and girls. Uh, you can register at the 7th District Police Community Room, and that registration will take place on this uh, this week. So, 747-6722-312-747-6722. Um, we have uh, a number of resources. The um, caucus, uh, the Illinois Black Caucus, is going to be having a uh, conference uh, real soon to talk about the foundation providing scholarships to students that will that can apply for those scholarships to pay tuition at state schools. You can get that information at 217-544-0444, 217-544-0444. That is to get the Illinois Black Caucus Legislators Scholarship on uh, we have a 14-week program in training, and that training is available for uh, the Greater Chicago Food Depository so that you can uh, work for the Greater Chicago Food Depository. And we have a tech program for girls at 6600 South Cottage Grove, a tech program where they teach children, women, about technology and improvement in that area. You know, we have a society right now that is going 
faster and faster. Science technology is at the forefront of that, and every time we can get an opportunity to train our children in that area, we need to be trying to change, do that. For further information, please call my office, 773-955-5610. I'm sorry I don't have more time to talk about these updates, but uh, also call and get on our newsletter list. Uh, we send out a newsletter every week, every Friday, Saturday, to give you all this information that I just read. In fact, I was reading off of my newsletter. Thank you. <laughs> We'd like to thank Alderman Cochran uh, for joining us this evening. Uh, in order for our democracy to thrive, we need an informed and engaged citizenry. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for calling in. And join us next week for the next edition of Political Forum. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you.